business is doing well. So much so that you decide to advertise for a new position. The applications start coming in and they're looking good. As you're going through the shortlisting process, flicking through the CVs, you notice something on one of the applications that you hadn't noticed before. One of the applicants, Philip, has disclosed that he's autistic. You hold his application in your hand, perhaps looking at it a little bit differently. What are you thinking? Has this changed things for you? What if I was to tell you that how you might look upon this disclosure is likely to be heavily influenced by your own schooling experiences? Let's explore this by considering one possible educational pathway that you might have taken. You attend your local high school. It is much sought after, so much so that your family moved into the area so that you would fall within the enrolment zone. The school's website promises a rigorous learning program, and on my school, they tick all the right boxes thanks to the high stakes testing results. The truth is that not all students at the school participated in the high stakes testing. Some of the students with disabilities were encouraged, yeah, maybe you should maybe just stay home that day. Not that there were maybe that many students with disabilities at your school anyway. Sure, you remember those in the inclusive unit. You know, those three classrooms on the other side of the oval. Yeah, the ramped ones. Yeah, yeah, yeah. With the, the separate playground and the, and the big fence around it. Yeah. <laughs> and there were other students with disabilities also that you notice uh, when, when you were first beginning high school. But a lot of those students seem to encounter difficulties early on with the school's academic and behavioural expectations. And when that occurred, the principal duly suspended them. Because it's important that we have consistent expectations across the school. Sometimes examples need to be made. When those suspensions became longer and more frequent, the families responded to the advice that they were given and they withdrew their children and they transferred them to the local special school. Now let's imagine that was your schooling experience. That placed you at this moment, this application in your hand. Philip, eh? Autistic. Oh gosh, what does that mean? You've got a million questions just zooming through your head. Oh, oh my gosh, what does it mean? Um, oh, I think I remember watching Rain Man once. What was that about? Qantas. That's not helpful. Um, <laughs> Oh, hang on, tantrums, lots of tantrums, that's right. Ooh, 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 ugh. You decide it might be best to just slide Philip's application onto the reject pile. Let's be clear. What you've just done is discrimination according to the Disability Discrimination Act. It is illegal for you to place Philip's application on the reject pile if you've done so because of the disability that he has disclosed. It's also a prime example of ableism, which is where you might systematically preference people without a disability um, over people with a disability. Now, the good news is there's a remedy for ableism. And that remedy is something that Australia has committed to as signatories to the UN Convention of the Rights of People with Disabilities. It's called inclusive education. Sound good? Let's uh, consider what your schooling pathway might have looked like if it was an inclusive one. For a starter, in an inclusive school, there would be an incredible sense of belonging for all students. And in an inclusive school, you would have incredible diversity across all year levels. So you would have students from different cultural backgrounds, religious backgrounds, different gender, different abilities, and diverse disabilities, all in the one school. And that difference wouldn't be considered to be problematic. It would be considered as something that would be enriching the school. All of the students in an inclusive school would be learning in the same accessible classroom. They would need different support, yes, but that support would be provided in a way that doesn't provide an additional social barrier for those students. An inclusive school doesn't have a teacher's aide kind of perched over the shoulder of a student. An inclusive school also might help you develop an understanding of what it might mean to have a disability. 
You make a friend, Mariko, her name is. She tells you that she has Asperger's syndrome, and you're not sure what that means. You know that she's not a very good conversationalist, but she kills at chess. You meet her at chess club, when she's playing against you, she reads your playbook like she wrote it. <laughs> when you look around the school now and then, you do notice that Mariko comes to be overwhelmed and has a meltdown. And when that happens, she's given space, time and dignity. She develops some friends at the school, and those friends check in on her, including you, and make sure she's okay. And sometimes she checks in on them as well. When Marika has a meltdown, the principal of the school doesn't suspend her, because there's no educational value in suspension, and because disability factors should be considered when making such decisions. Let's imagine that was your schooling experience, quite a different one, an experience where you were with so many different diverse pupils, different friends, different students, and here you are now, Philip, eh? Interesting. Yeah, you'd likely still have some questions, but those questions might be fewer, and they would be informed by your experiences. You know there can be some challenges with autism, but there could be some strengths there as well, like a really focused skill set that might be perfect for that new project that you want to get up and going. Good for you, good for business. You put Philip's application on the interview pile. Three days later, there he is, bang on time. <laughs> During the interview, he doesn't give the best eye contact. But you know that's not rudeness. Your inclusive experience has helped you develop an understanding. You know that's not rudeness, it's most likely to be a characteristic that he has. One schooling experience has led you to uncertainty and fear, and the other schooling experience has led you to an understanding and value of difference. The research shows that inclusive education is strongly beneficial to students with and without disabilities, academically and socially. We learn better together. Inclusive education is also about change, just about making change in us, and therefore change in our society. Now yeah. listening to me, you might think, this sounds fantastic, Peter. Oh, we do this everywhere? Um, we don't always practice what we preach. Okay, um, in the last census, we found out that the growth in regular schools was about 3%. Growth in special schools was 17%. It is boom time right now in special schooling. In South Australia, our special schools are filled to capacity. In fact, this year we opened our very first special school for students on the autism spectrum. A local paper described it as the first school for autistic students. Not even the first special school, the first school. I think we should fact check this. At the end of this year, this school is likely to have about 45 students enrolled. Now, in South Australia, we have 3,400 students with autism in our system. It's quite a discrepancy. So where are all the rest of these students? Well, the vast majority are in regular schools. Some of them are in special schools. What we don't know is to what degree they're experiencing quality inclusive education. And I think we should be looking a bit deeper at their experiences. I say this because in a national survey this year, which looked at the experiences of students with disabilities, it was found that one in two had experienced bullying during their schooling. One in three had been excluded from school activities because of their disability. And one in five had been either secluded or restrained during their school. In South Australia, students with disabilities represent under 9% of our student population, but they represent over 22% of our suspensions. So the students that are most at risk of being marginalised in our system are being nudged and nudged closer to the edge. Now I think we can do a lot better than that. I'm not here saying inclusive education is easy, because it's not. It takes time and it takes strong leadership. Strong leadership to change a school culture from one that pushes kids away to one that holds them in. 
And on the first day that this school opened, one of the students was asked, hey, how was the first day? To which he replied, it was awesome. The teacher didn't shout once. So what I ask is this, do we need to be building more and more and more and more and more and more and more special schools, or should we be applying some of our time and some more of our attention on why some of our teachers are still yelling at some of our kids? I think we need to challenge why so many students um, with disabilities are leaving regular education. Is it best for them, and is it best for us? Philip disclosed his disability in the job application, but he didn't need to do that. He disclosed it, trusting that we would look at it and it wouldn't become a deal breaker. We would know the legislation and it wouldn't become a problem. But Philip is only one person. If we've got 3,400 students with just autism in our state, state, uh, state education system, that's a lot of jobs that we need to find, a lot of meaningful educational pathways that need to be made. A lot of people that we want to see embraced in our society. If all of us in this hall are fortunate enough to live till we are 80 years of age, then by then, half of us would have a disability. You, the person next to you. When that happens, do you want to be living in a society that keeps disability at arm's length or an inclusive society? You need to think about it now because it begins with our schooling and it begins with our education system. We need to start thinking differently about difference. Thank you.